Right, so this is the first of the making of the control surface for the video editor. Um, I'm going to sort of outline what I'm thinking about doing, how I'm going to achieve it, what I'm going to use, parts I'm going to go. Plus it's also a first test of this OBS Studio setup. I've used the roughest, crummiest cameras I can get my hands on just to really make it show how easy it can be done. I'm looking at a 24 pound video camera that I've had for years. I've got other stuff in there. Uh, I've got a, 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 a shot there which will allow us to look at code at a later date. I've got a rostrum camera which is right up on the ceiling, which I had bought it ages ago. It was, I think it was 70 quid before lockdown. Uh, I've got a camera, little again, just a plain ordinary um, uh, USB camera, uh, looking straight at the oscilloscope, which we'll be looking at later. And then uh, lastly, I've got like a little uh, GoPro behind me, which is one of those 30 quid cheap Chinese GoPros on the USB that looks at the whole thing and I can turn around and wave at it like that. Uh, but the main thing is you can actually see the loading table, what I'm actually going to discuss in each section. So, oh, and I've set OBS Studio up so that I can trigger it by just pressing the numbers. It's fairly easy to do. Just looking at that, I wonder whether it's a little bit soft, but it'll do. So, uh, choices of control, uh, which is the first thing I'm going to look at. Uh, one of the things I do want to look at is the idea of potentially using a joystick. Let's have a look at that for the depth of field. Uh, so what you do is you literally move the joystick over. Uh, because it is a joystick, you do get a proportional thing. So from a point of view of streaming, you could actually set it up in the software so that the more you press, the faster it streams. Uh, plus it also has a little press down switch. So you could say, go there, mark in, go there, mark out. And let the system know that, that, that whatever you've done last, was, was, it was the next one you're going to do. So I'm going to look at the possibility of joysticks as a nice, simple solution. And they are very simple. This is a, a joystick that's designed to work with the breadboard. It's got the outputs and it's all a little PCB. Long term with this project. Long term, it shouldn't take me that long. Uh, I want to put the uh, whole thing onto its own PCB. I've also got some little steppers. Uh, when I say steppers, they're not steppers, they're effectively encoders. And you can twist them and you can keep twisting them. They've got a little bit of a ball bearing that means they click, they go, you can feel them click as they go around. But again, they're set out uh, slightly uh, harder to deal with because you've got to look for the wave fronts on them. But uh, we'll go through how you can do it in the software as we work our way through. I've also got a really nice encoder. This is a much more expensive encoder, and it literally is glide smooth. Uh, and I'm going to look at one of these as a possibility, purely because, from a point of view of jog shuttling, that beautiful feel um, might be something I want to put in. It's a, it's a real feeling. But again, it's down to being able to integrate it into the software. I'm potentially going to use some switches. Uh, so that's a little illuminated switch. They're not as easy to get to because they're literally 10 millimeters square and there's actually uh, six connectors on the back of there so that when you're building your PCBs you ended up having to make things fairly close and tight. This is the same idea except with the round top against an illuminated switch where when you press it down, again whether it illuminates when you press it is down to your software because those out two are where it actually connects, and then those out two <coughs> are where the um, LED connects. So whether these light up is purely software. It isn't necessarily guaranteed that you, you don't. You could actually make it only light up when when it works. Um, I'm potentially going to look at using the Arduino as uh, the controller. I might not use the uh, Uno. That's an Uno. Partly because it's a bit short on programming space and it doesn't have any legs for the future. I'm probably going to go for an Internet of Things board. But we'll start out by using a new node just to solve all the basic problems. And then we'll look at how we extend it from there. And then I've invested in a little uh, screen. Uh, I've never seen one of these before in my life. Came today, decided I'd have a look at them. 
and it is a touch screen it does actually drop onto an uno but that uh, the idea you literally just plug that into the uno and they become one unit uh, it does mean that uh, your screen has to have an uno at the back of each one for it to work so all of a sudden uh, that suddenly becomes an interestingly expensive solution uh, but it's under programming and so it's under control so the nice thing is you can decide what that screen does and you can decide how it reacts and what it, uh, what it does it looks like it's got a little SD card on the back so you could probably preload it with things like pictures and what have you and icons so that instead of having to send everything to the unit uh, which is how the most screens work you can actually call up ready to go screens uh, or whatever. Again, don't know whether I, I'll have the patience to, to do this or whether I'll actually just end up, make, end up making a very simplistic uh, edit controller. But that's been where I am at the moment. I thought, well, I'll do a little quick input uh, where we literally talk about the whole system. This is my workshop, by the way. This is where I... Um, I suppose I used to do all my electronics here, but now um, this is sort of my hobby area for me electronics when I'm I, I can work from home and I do work from home if I if I feel like I want to have a break away from the factory but um, it's mostly a mess <laughs> it needs it always needs tidying no matter how many times I tidy it it always needs tidying it's one of those places it's like the seventh bridge you can work your way around tidying it and tidying it and tidying it and you've no chance but yeah so anyway that's the scope of the project at this stage I thought I'll do a quick I don't know how quick it is I'll be interested to see when I take it up to edit it a quick input on the start and get some feedback on what people think and I've tried to light my face a little bit with little cheap desk lights uh, which you can actually see they're just little two little cheap desk lights we've got the scope there with the screen looking at it uh, desk there with all the bits that I'll be using so that I'll load the desk and bring them on uh, and hopefully be able to do it all in one, one take like I've just done now. We'll see how it works out.